Do intestines contain germs? Have you ever wondered how your body breaks down food and absorbs nutrients? The intestines are one of the major organs that decide how high your blood glucose will be and how insulin resistant you'll be. There are two intestines, the small intestine and the large intestine. The small intestine is the longest segment of our gastrointestinal tract. This is where food is broken down into liquid and most of its nutrients are absorbed. The large intestine includes the colon, rectum, and anus. It's a long tube that continues from the small intestine as food reaches the end of its journey. Through your digestive system, the large intestine turns food waste into stool and passes it from the body when you release them. Along with the stomach, they are both part of what we commonly refer as the gut. So, what do you need to know about your gut? Well, don't go anywhere and keep watching. In this video, we'll explore the role of the intestines, whether or not they contain germs, and how they can play a major role in managing your diabetes. But before we get started, can you do us a favor and like this video? Ring the bell for future notifications. And make sure to subscribe to the Diabetics Talk channel for more help managing diabetes and your overall health. Plus, stick around to find out how you can get three very special gifts. And now, let's dive into your gut by looking at the role of the intestines in diabetes. Your gut is made of two intestines. And surprisingly, the small intestine is the one that takes the most room in your body. It is between 20 to 30 feet long, and its role is to absorb food. Within the small intestine, food moves within three main sections. The duodenum, which mixes semi-digested food with bile from the gallbladder, liver, and pancreas. The jejunum, which absorbs fatty acids, sugars, and amino acids. And the ileum, which processes most of the nutrients before passing foods along to the large intestine. The large intestine is about five feet long. It surrounds the small intestine, and its role is to process salts and liquids left from the digestive process. Most nutrients are already absorbed by the time food reaches the large intestine. However, things like fiber, water, dead cells, and bile are broken down further before exiting the body. In order to function properly, the intestines rely on their flora, which is a group of bacteria. So, does that mean the intestines contain germs? Not quite. Germs refer to fungi, bacteria, and viruses that can intoxicate, damage, or kill healthy cells. In short, germs are bad. But within the intestinal flora, not all bacteria are bad. In fact, a wide variety of bacteria is essential for gut health. Research has shown that there are between 300 to 500 different bacteria species in the gut, and that the gut contains millions of bacteria. So while the intestines don't automatically contain germs, they can definitely be prone to them. Symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and stomach pain can sometimes be the result of germs. So, is it possible for diabetics, because of their condition, to have more germs or bad bacteria in their gut? And how does the intestine work when dealing with diabetes? Before we answer these questions, are you ready for your free gifts? Discover an entire world of diabetes fighting foods with our new book. 10 Incredible Foods That Reduce Blood Sugar. Plus, you'll discover the real reason why type 2 diabetes, obesity, and heart disease are increasing at an alarming rate. And find out what really works when it comes to preventing these illnesses by watching our free one-hour documentary, The Scary Truth About Sugar. And not only that, we are giving away a free recipe book, Amazing Alternatives to Rice, Pasta, and Bread which contains over 50 easy-to-prepare and easy-to-follow recipes for the whole family. These gifts are free and waiting for you to grab them in the description box below. And now, let's take a look at the role of the intestines in diabetes. The bacteria found in the intestines and overall gut influences how your body uses insulin and manages blood glucose. Keeping your intestines flora rich in various bacteria by eating a healthy, and regulated diet can make it easier to manage diabetes. Alternatively, a poor diet and lifestyle can increase the risks of gut imbalance, making room for bad bacteria and potential germs to develop. When this happens, the intestines may struggle to do their job, and as a result, it may influence insulin resistance, blood glucose, inflammation, and increases the risks of diabetes complications. Scientific reviews have observed that diabetes and gut health 
Go hand in hand. Diabetes, especially diabetes mellitus, which is a metabolic disorder that prevents the body from regulating glycemia, can modify the genome and bacteria in the gut, and as a result, it influences more bad bacteria and diabetes complications. Additionally, poor gut health can lead to the same results. Diabetes can also bring more obvious intestinal problems, such as constipation and gastroparesis. Gastroparesis, also called delayed gastric emptying, is a disorder that slows or stops the movement of food from your stomach to your small intestine, even though there is no blockage in the stomach or intestines. It's a condition wherein food remains in the stomach for longer than it should. While this condition is more common in women than in men, diabetes is the primary cause of this intestinal disorder. This is because diabetes can damage the vagus nerve, which regulates the digestive system and its bacteria. With gastroparesis, you can experience heartburn, stomach pain, bloating, lack of appetite, sudden weight loss, and difficulty controlling blood glucose. However, studies point out that gastroparesis is more common in people with type 1 diabetes. This is likely because type 1 diabetes is considered to be an autoimmune disease. And with this autoimmune disease, the immune system mistakenly attacks the healthy tissues of the body and destroys the insulin-producing cells of the pancreas. And without an adequate supply of insulin, cells can't get the energy they need. And because of this, blood sugar levels rise, leading to symptoms such as frequent urination, increased thirst, and irritability. This may also mean that bad bacteria and germs are more likely to develop in the intestines. And the changes in the microorganisms in the gut could lead to alterations in the gut's immune system, which greatly affects the gut's permeability causes intestinal inflammation, and increased sensitivity to food allergens. Overall, the intestines, and the gut in general, are vital parts of the digestive process. The term germs is used to define bad bacteria, which the intestines don't naturally contain. Instead, their flora is filled with healthy and neutral bacteria. However, diabetes can damage the intestinal flora and make it more prone to germs. In the same way, poor gut health can trigger diabetes complications. Keeping your intestines healthy will ultimately come down to a healthy and nutrient-rich diet. So there you have it. Everything you need to know about intestines, germs, and their role with diabetes. And now, we want to hear from you. What has surprised you? And how healthy do you think your gut and intestine are? Is there any topic that you want to know more about that you want us to cover? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And before you leave, make sure to claim your free gifts by clicking the link in the description below. It's our free book, 10 Incredible Foods for Diabetics, a free one-hour documentary, The Scary Truth About Sugar, with interviews from highly renowned experts and the amazing alternatives to rice, pasta, and bread, a recipe book full of delicious, healthy, and easy-to-prepare meals. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button for more diabetics talk. Thanks for watching. We hope you're having a diabetes-fighting day.